who do you think wins this game? Ever since we lost to the Chiefs, I have been on a big time. I don't want anybody to win. I just watched the Pro Bowl a couple days ago, and I just remember being like, I don't want, I don't want the FC to win. Go for it. <laughs> Yo, 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 welcome to RG3 and the Ones Away Sports and Entertainment Original presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Robert Griffin III, and on this show, I'm talking to the Ones. I mean, the Ones at the top of their game in sports and entertainment who don't just know the game, but also study it and come here to deliver the facts. Who am I? I'm just the one who uh, has the solution to the NFL Pro Bowl to make it more enjoyable, not only for the fan at home, but for the athletes that also compete in it. But before we get there, I'll let you guys know. We're going to have new episodes dropping every single Thursday. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And in case you were getting a little lonely without us throughout the week, make sure you follow us on social media at RG3 and the ones. That's right, at RG3 and the ones. So you can get those daily clips so you can see what's happening in the episodes and also get excited for the next week's show. Also, you can listen to us wherever you get your podcast. So make sure you're dialed in with us so you can take this game and take at least one thing from this show that you can apply to your own life so you can become the one in that bad boy as well. Coming up on this episode, I'm talking to the one. I mean, he is my former teammate, but he's also one of the greatest cornerbacks I've ever been able to lay my eyes on and go up against in practice and watch him dominate in the game. He's a three-time Pro Bowler. For the Baltimore Ravens, I'm talking about Alabama's very own Marlon Humphrey. Welcome to the show, my brother. How we doing? Happy to be here. Uh, Yeah, happy to be here, man. I've been seeing a lot of clips. I'm happy to finally get on the show. Hey, man, I'm I'm happy that you're here, and I want you to know I'm letting the people know that whenever you call on me to come to your show, I will be there 100%. And before we get into any of the the real serious conversations – uh, although every conversation we have is every serious, we have a serious I wanted true. to ask you this question, Marlon. What are your thoughts on the Pro Bowl games? My thoughts on the Pro Bowl games mm-hmm. are I did not watch much this year, <laughs> but I, it's it's a it's mixed feelings. I think okay. being that guys don't really want to play and get hit and get hurt, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. And I think it, I remember last year wasn't in it this year, but last year it was fun. I think there could be more game aspects to it, um, even though there's mm-hmm. a plenty of it now. But, I mean, you could do yes without guys getting hurt. 40 dash. You could do a basketball game. There could be a lot. There could be a lot. And I think these mm-hmm. ideas are coming. Yes. But I think, uh, I think it's a good replacement. I haven't heard anything better because you're not playing the actual game, I would say. Okay. Okay. So that's a very uh, astute answer, Marlon. Uh, But I have, uh, talking to the guys and talking to you last year at the Pro Bowl games, I I think I have the solution for the NFL and and what what the Pro Bowl should be. First of all, it's got to get moved back to Hawaii. Listen, Orlando was phenomenal. Vegas was great last year. But I think the guys would appreciate being able to go spend some time in Hawaii like they seen the the greats do, like the Peyton Mannings and all those guys. I think that's a, the number one thing. Okay. Secondly, I think it should be the Pro Bowl Olympics. All right, right now we've got all these games. Uh, I think that I think the flag game and the obstacle course on Sundays is is phenomenal. Yeah. I think guys enjoy it. They have a lot of fun. The fans enjoy it. But I would spend that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of the leak leading up to the Pro Bowl and and separate it in days to where you could do swimming and Ooh. beach volleyball on Ooh. one day ping pong and pickleball the Ooh. next day and on the last day marlon your suggestion do basketball, basketball. you got a dunk contest, dunk contest skill competition and a three-point contest now i can't take credit for all of those <laughs> micah parsons gave me the idea of beach volleyball and cd lamb gave me the idea of obviously the three-point competition mm. but what do you think about that proposal proposal of the pro bowl olympics to eliminate some of the games like kick-tack-toe i actually would love that. I would love to see the bigs throw some shot put. Oh my like, gosh. I, mean, I think, you know, I think if you, <laughs> obviously you're a huge track guy, but if you've never 100%. really been around track, it is one of the track and field. It is very interesting to watch an elite track meet from start every event. It's not like, oh, you know, man. the only thing that makes track bad is when you're at like a high school meet and you got 20 heats of the 3200. It's like, dude, okay. Right. Now this is too long. <laughs> when you're watching the elites, it doesn't matter if they're running a 10K. 
It's amazing. It reminded me of the shot put discus. So I do I love that idea because I know, I think the last day is a lot, but the kick tac toe, I don't know what happened. I think tuck one. One year tuck they couldn't one, even yes. kick the, the things out. It was taking forever. And then it, <laughs> it's like, all right, this is this is this is getting to be a lot. So <laughs> I think if it turned into that, I think that would be because who wants like who wouldn't want to see somebody play ping uh, ping pong? You know, yeah, man. Be, they're, they're, the ideas are endless. So yes. um, I love that idea. I love that idea. Yeah, it's it's part of part of it is being able to get those things to fit into like an hour, hour and a half yeah. time slot. That too. That's more of the issue. You can't do them all in the same day, but I think they could. They could boost it up that way because we we do say that football players are the best athletes in the world. So let's see some of these big guys it's and true. small guys doing some of these other events. I think it would be pretty cool. But now that we've talked about that, let's talk about the game. Um, listen, man, I actually watch your podcast and, and, and I think you're doing a phenomenal job Thank being you. able to not just control the narrative, but also have fun and have fun with your teammates. It's been yeah. phenomenal to watch you do that, man. You've always had a great personality, so I'm glad that other people get to see that on a bigger scale. Um, but the, the question is just from your perspective, if you, once you digested the game against the chiefs and the AFC championship game, what, what do you think went wrong for you guys? Man, I think looking, looking back on it, um, you, you, you know, I, uh, I went back in the building, I guess last week when things died down, um, and you, you, you really, you, you can come at it a little less emotionally, I would say, you know, once a couple of days go down, you know, right after you're just you know, all over the place, but right. you look at it and it's like football. That's why I like football is the greatest sport just because it's like, it's just so crazy. It is. If you did, it's just so much that can happen. You look at how the offense, we got to where we needed to go to score. Like we got in those areas. We made the play. Like, of course we did not play a great game. It's crazy. If you look at the chiefs first half, offensively, they actually played a perfect first half. That's just, they actually legit. There's not perfection, but they actually played a perfect first half. Us on offensively, we didn't have a, we didn't really have a perfect game at any point, but we were still right, right. there in the game for us to win it. And so I would say, right. what really went wrong? You know, obviously, you know, everyone points to the establishing the run game. Um, we we it seemed like every time we tried to run, we kind of got stuffed. But you know, that's kind of how the run game works. Sometimes you you go there, right. you keep going there, and then it breaks through. But even right. with you know, those lack of carries, I wouldn't say that's what lost us the game because we still were able to get the places where we went to go. But I think we just, the time of possession killed us, I think. Right. You know, keeping our offense, that's such a good offense, cold. And then I got to credit their defense. I mean, they, they, they made some good yeah. plays. They had some good angles. They had some good angles and some stuff that should have been out the gate. Like that Lamar one, I mean, right. there, there, was, there was so much that went wrong. But I would say the biggest <laughs> thing probably would be Defense, us getting off the field on fourth down. Some of those were like, yeah. and some of those third down. Oh man, those were like, some of those just like, you hit it hits you in the gut. And when our offense, right, right. as you know, as a quarterback, you're like, whew, that was a close one, but we got it. That just builds so much momentum. Right. And so, getting off the field early in the game, I think, you know, really could have helped our offense get back hot. And then at the end of the game, you know, obviously, you know, just the turnovers. Um, I think killed us um in the second half so it was it was just i mean they they played a really good game i think i really liked how they approached the game they didn't try to do any big shots they just tried to do four yards four yards first down four yards five yards first down. they and they they did it well and then you know obviously in the second half we shut them out and that's when their defense kind of stepped up so it was uh it was good but it, it was in the second half but it just wasn't ended up not being enough it's basically how it goes it's not just one thing that went wrong yeah. to, uh, you know, accumulation of things that, that go wrong over the course of a game. But you mentioned something about there being like a last team meetup or, or link up at the end of the season. Um, and we both know this as football players. We don't really, two teams are never the same, right? Never the same. Guys dude. that are in your room are no longer in your room come the next year. They might not even be the same room throughout the course of an entire season anyway. So how was that last link up? Um, and, and what was the sentiment amongst the guys? Yeah, it was, uh, I came home and, uh, it's crazy. The lady was taking the loss. Like she was, she couldn't say a word. She was acting like she played in the game. But I'm like, I'm like, goodness, you, you, she, she was like, I just didn't think they were going to be like, I guess, you know, she's Canadian. So her having right. no really acknowledgement of what football is to a T 
she just thinks Pat Mahomes is like this average guy. Like she thinks right, like he's right, like, right. I didn't think that team was even good. Like I'm like, well, they kind of got like one of the he's on the trend to be one of the best quarterbacks in football, possibly. She's like, I just didn't think so. She was just super, super shocked. And so it's like man. 10 o'clock or 1030. And someone's like, man, we should get up, man. Like have a meal. You know what I mean? Like don't sell it. Right. Like, you know, obviously we lost, but, you know, let's appreciate what we had. And so going into year set, finishing year seven, going in year eight, it hit me a little, this loss hit me a little different than it ever had just because. I ain't finna be Tom Brady. I can't play until I'm 20 years in, you know? So Right, right. Like, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You're kind of like, dang, like this is, uh, this was a really special team. And uh, just go there and you got, it, it's, it's, everyone I think takes, you know, losses different. We had one of the guys who was being Mr. Mr. Uh, everything happens for a reason. I'm like, no. Like, right. I don't want to hear that right <laughs> now. You know what I mean? You gotta be positive. Right, I'm like, right. bro, this is, this no, I am being negative. Like I'm not being the positive thing, but uh, it was it was good. No, I, I noticed you you took it hard, and I saw you tweet out, you know, about like it really hit you that like this was you guys' year, and yeah, um, you know, I, I saw Lamar uh, on social media, uh, whether it was posting like a crying emoji or face oh, yeah. uh, or a video. Uh, I saw him like for like the last two or three months of the season, like hitting all these, uh, you know. God chains, you know, how they put them on Twitter and it's like, hey, if you say thank you, Jesus, right here, you're going to be blessed for the whole rest of the year. <laughs> he was hitting them almost every day. And I'm like, I'm seeing him because like I follow him on social media. And I'm like, OK, Lamar, <laughs> I see you trying to get all the positive juices going in the right direction. And when I look at the game, there's people blaming Lamar. There's people blaming Todd Monk. And you've touched on it a little bit, the running game or whatever it may be. There's people that that might be. Blame in Coach Harbaugh, but when you look at it in those moments, why was it that you believed that you guys were still going to come back and, and win the game no matter what was going on? Man, I just – it just never seemed like we were out of that game. Um, right. I think they weren't – it didn't seem like they were doing anything to really just just beat us, you know what I mean? Like, they were, they were obviously playing really good football. They were – but they weren't doing anything ordinary, and that's the biggest thing of playoff football wins you don't need to do anything crazy out of the, this world to win games you need to play a solid football game and i think that's kind of and the turn, solid football game and turnover free and they did exactly that and you know they, they were able to, to win the game and it's so it's it just it just seemed like we were right there i mean shoot we really weren't there you um, were yeah it's just which is just like the ah, it's just it's a hard pill to swallow but um yeah. Yeah, you gotta you gotta salute them. And um but man, it just you just look at our season. It's like Yeah, man. It's just a dominant I, year. Dude, it was a dominant year. Like I mean, I no, was a dominant year. I was just looking back at it and I'm like, I could see us getting here again, but I cannot see it being so perfect the way it was. You know what I mean? If you look at Correct. the teams we I mean, we blew the 49ers out. We blew good football teams out. You know what I mean? It's like 2019. Yes. You look at 2019, you're yes. like, this was, this was nuts. Like, this was, that was, <laughs> 2019 was ridiculous, though. That was like. Unbelievable. I mean, I remember sitting on the bench with fourth quarter with like 10 minutes left. and like, God, it's going to take us two more stops. And the offense keeps the ball for 10 minutes and we don't get back on the field. Mm -hmm. it, that exactly. happened at least like two or three times. And yes, so you can get it. The hard way you can go, the wild card. It doesn't matter which way you get there, way to get there. But this year just yeah. seems so almost like a a fairy tale as far as the way the the way how kind of not perfect, but how good it went. Yeah, and you and you actually dealt with some injuries this year, um, you know, throughout that process, and and still were able to come back and and play at a high level. But I agree with you. Twenty nineteen, like we ran for the most rushing yards in the galaxy, yeah. like ever. It was it was, it was unbelievable. It was fun. Um, but when I you know, I look at this year and it's like, hey, we can sit here and we can talk about all the, the things that went wrong at the end of the year uh, in that playoff game. But let's talk about some of the great moments. You know what I'm saying? Like coach dancing in the locker room after you guys win the good. divisional, the round game. Like, all right, what, like, how, how do you feel about that? His dance moves? <laughs> and then, like, what was that moment like? His, I, I love that. You know, I love, like, this is, and this, this is going to, this is going to end up going to you. I love anyone 
that can just be themselves in a moment. Harb's yeah. probably, I don't think he'd have ever really attempted that dance move before, but he <laughs> felt at that moment, I should do some sort of weird, like, it's like he tried to, du- I don't know what it was, but yeah, what, yeah, whatever it was, whatever it was, <laughs> it was good. Like, just it be, was good. It be was good. yourself. And it's like, you know, he did that. It was a, it was a moment. And that's why I got so much respect for you. I'm like, the one thing about RG, he, he don't really care what others think. He's going to do, do him. And I feel like yep. that's what, you know, we're missing a lot in this, this just generation. It's like, just be yourself. Okay. It'll just, yep. the only way to be different is to be yourself. Like, it's kind of that simple. Right. Everyone's trying to be different, but they're trying to copy someone to be different. And that's what I thought of Harv. It was like, that was not the best, but it was the best because you thought that was it. <laughs> and I was doing it with, and I love it. So, that dance move was, 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 was it was good. That was a, that was a special moment. Um, yeah, it was. That was fun. Do you think that was that your, the funniest moment you've had with, with Harbaugh, or would you say there's a funnier one you could tell us? Harbs, the eyes, you know, Harbs has some animated meetings. Um, yes, he does. Any story that he tells about his uh, about his dad is is, is pretty funny. Um, yes. I don't know. That one might take the cake. There's a lot of laughs I get out of Harbs team meetings, um, especially when he's yep. trying to be funny. Or if his dad's there, um, but that that might have been that might have been one of the best. That might have been one of the best. All right, people, you know what time it is? It's the final countdown. That's right, RG three and the ones presented by Prize Picks, and Prize Picks is the most fun I've had, winning up to twenty five times my money this football season, and I've been having a blast all year long. If you can't tell, it's super simple. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Pow! Just like that, you're in the game. And since the big game is this week, if you have the skills, and we know I got them, but do you? Prize Picks is the place where it's the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game-changing moment, just like Brock Purdy, into a hundred times your own money with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into one thousand dollars oh my gosh it really is simple to play i can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds there's quick withdrawals easy gameplay and a huge selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app all right let's get into it people this week on prize picks i'm selecting mm, patrick mahomes to pass for more than one yard in the big game and if he does that if patrick mahomes throws for more than one yard in the big game you can win on prize picks it's gonna be pretty hard for him not to he's a starting quarterback and they gotta kind of throw throw the football i don't know if any quarterback in nfl history has ever not had one yard so you get the point point. and then my second pick is going to be christian mccaffrey all right so in nine or seven of the last nine games, he's been so automatic in scoring touchdowns, whether it be via a rushing touchdown or receiving touchdown. So I'm going to say that he has more than one or more than half. He just scores one touchdown when it comes to rushing or receiving. And I think that's a really, really simple thing to uh, go ahead uh, and move forward with pretty much because the 49ers are going to have to run the football to win this game. It's what the Chiefs are the weakest, and the 49ers are a team that are based in the running game. So if you trust me and trust my football analysis, go ahead and make those picks because you're going to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So those are my picks. Daily Fantasy Sports is made easy with prize picks. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com backslash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's right. Go to prizepicks.com backslash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. Come on now, guys. Let's get that money. Okay, so before we get back to the football, tell me you remember the, the team meeting we had with, uh, with Crabtree when he threw him the, the, the brown military <laughs> shirt. Please tell me you remember that meeting. That was... I do remember <laughs> oh that. Oh, my God. I do remember that. That 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 had to be an all timer. That me. was uh, that was probably all timer, and the one when someone was like, "Yo, bro, look at Earl, look at Earl." I look over, Earl's just sitting in the meeting with blackout shades on. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, no one can see his eyes. I was, it was it was hilarious just looking over and seeing Earl just doing that. But the Crabtree throwback, the shirt was that that that's got to be up there. That's in the top five for sure. But not no, everyone noticed. 
That if, that's what was even they, funny. They didn't. People just it like was wild. Like, people Harms was kind of like, what just I don't even know if he know really realized what happened until after the fact. Yes. Yes. I'll tell a story. Listen, we we get this brown shirt. Uh it's like the hard worker of the week. Like it is the um, most, as Harb says, the most prestigious award. Word for there word. you go. Most prestigious award that he gives out every week to a guy could be a scout team guy, could be a guy that actually played in the game and, and had great numbers or a guy that went unnoticed because of some of the things that he was doing. So Crabtree, uh, I think in that game, he had like three catches for 19 yards and uh, coach decides to give him the brown shirt for blocking. Because we, you know, we were running right. football team, you know, yeah. the coordinator Roman, I believe it was Roman at the time and Lamar and the guys and Crabtree blocked his tail off the entire game. So coach throws him the brown shirt and Crabtree grabs that bad boy and throws it back immediately. I mean, I, I'm looking back like, oh, snap. As the, as the shirt's traveling back, Marlon, in my head, I'm like, oh, they about to cut him. <laughs> oh, oh, he getting cut. He getting cut for doing that. And it was the, the, the shock on everybody's face in the room is what really got me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was just astonishing because Harv's put so much effort into all those awards yeah. and it means something to him. And it felt like in that moment, it was kind of getting, you know, shit on. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get past that story no, and I, let's get but back I, to. But I will say. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The brown shirt. I don't know if, if I've just been at the Ravens for a long time or what, <laughs> but it, I just got my first brown shirt last year. So I was kind of like, I was kind of like, you know, I. I was proud of that shirt. You know, I was getting, yeah. I was giving away a whole bunch of Raven stuff because it, you know, I just have too much stuff. And my homie, right, right, right. I have my homie handling it. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm giving away this Rave, this brown shirt. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I got to keep that shirt now. That's, that's, a, that's a big, got to keep that's that a, shirt. A big, so the, the brown shirt is, uh, I know, too, was it, was it Kenny Bell? Kenny Bell used to wear that shirt like every single day underneath his Exactly. Like, it's, it's a big deal to some. I think it's a big deal to most, but Crabtree definitely, he was mad about it. He, he wants him to set, he's not trying to block. He did not want that brown shirt. And I'm a three-time brown shirt recipient, so I'm kind of shocked that you just got your first it one last long, year. But listen, long time, right? your, your, your play on the field is definitely worthy of the brown shirt. When you look at everything that's been going on with, with Mahomes and, and just how great he's been, my colleague Shannon Sharp uh, said that Mahomes, you know, he's just taking it to another level and no one should be compared to him. Uh, when you look at it from a, a Lamar Jackson standpoint, what do you think it will take for Lamar to get to that Patrick Mahomes level of football? Man, I feel or like... Or do you think he's already there? I feel like, you know, I, I'm like a... You, get, you can't say someone's, you know, the greatest without, obviously, the bowl, you know? Right, and right. we have now turned this, the bowl into a quarterback-only thing, which yep. it just is what it is. I mean, it's... it's and so I think... Obviously, that's all. I think the only difference is just us getting there and winning. You know, I think I got you. Mahomes, I will say what the craziest thing about watching Mahomes, he's able to make crazy things be done so simple. That's yes. that's probably his like. It's it's like it's crazy to watch that. Like he makes yep. crazy things look so simple. When Lamar does something crazy, it looks crazy. And he put some effort into it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, I got a dish. Right. I but it's just you. like, Mahomes is like, oop, get out of the way, get out of the way. Okay, now I'm about to sling this ball. Like, somehow, I remember um, the game, the maybe like whenever we played them last, the, the game right. plan was, uh, or his thing was like, do not fall for the Mahomes pump fake with the ball. And right. I'm like, God, I mean, we nailed it all week. I come on a blitz. I'm playing nickel. I come, he pump fakes. I like slightly go for it, but I come, boom, hit him, hit him. Okay. Take him to the ground after he threw a touchdown because I went for the bank. <laughs> so, I hit him though. I tagged him to the ground, but I fell for the fake. It was enough time. He launches it. I, uh, uh, and then it's like <sighs> touchdown. And I'm like, so it's like, it, he's, he, like I said, he just makes simple, like the craziest things look, so I was the first recipient of the no look pass. Really? That Mahomes did. Yes. Okay. So I see. Talk this. to me about it. Dude, I'm running across the field. I will say the no look did, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, as a, I'm running across the field, my guy's, he's got me beat. He's got me beat a little bit. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to say okay. a lot bit. But yeah, I mean, yeah, about 
two, three yards. But, so I'm running and I'm like, oh, he's not even looking at my guy. So like I am running, but I'm not like, Ugh. I'm like, he's not looking at my guy. And You're of, not grinding to get I'm there. I'm not grinding to get there. Out of nowhere, I'm like, this dude just, what, what just happened? And then he completes it. And then for the next thing you know, it's, you know, Mahomes, no look pad. Yep. Yep. yep and yep. I was like, that was kind of nice. I was kind of hating. I wanted to hate, but he did <laughs> trick me. So it wasn't much hating I could do, but he's, uh, so, see, he doesn't crazy stuff. He doesn't crazy stuff. Nah, see that you have it right there from, from all pro Marlo, as we like to call him, the, the no looks do work. Oh, for sure. Uh, but I was actually, I was really impressed with uh, a throw that not many people are talking about, uh, in that AFC championship game. Uh, they had like a, a rollout to the right and Kelsey had like a backside slant and Mahomes didn't, he ran to the right, but didn't stop and pop and throw it back. Yeah. He kind of ran out to the right, saw it wasn't there. And then just like looked with his eyes back to Kelsey and threw it while he was like on the wrong foot and hit him in perfect stride right down the middle of the field uh, for a 10 plus yard gain. And people don't really pay attention to those because they've become so accustomed to seeing Mahomes make these crazy throws, yeah. whether it's a no look, the one where he was like parallel to the ground and they expect that. But like a throw like that, that to Kelsey in that game, yeah. that's, that's one of the hardest throws you can have as a quarterback, yeah. especially without setting your feet. So I'm beyond astonished at what he's been able to pull off. But, but Marlo, I, I've been really upset about how they have been portraying our guy Lamar Jackson. Uh, you know, this is six years as a starter. He's two and four in playoff games. You know who else was two and four in playoff games after their first six playoff games? Oh. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was two and four in his first six playoff games. He didn't win his first Super Bowl till his ninth year in the NFL. Peyton Manning has lost the most playoff games in NFL history. Oh, crap. He's 14 and 13. And Manning ended up with two Super Bowls when it was all said and done. And what people won't tell you is that during Manning's two Super Bowl winning uh, you know, runs, his quarterback rating in the playoffs was under 90. So when you say the difference between a guy like Mahomes and the way that they perceive Lamar, I agree with you. It just comes down to getting there and winning the game. Yeah. That's, the, that's really that's, what yeah. the crux of the issue is because we, they say, I think Lamar is going to win his second MVP, right? No one really doesn't think he's a good football player, but they do keep saying that they don't think that he can win it when it matters. And I don't think that that's a fair assessment. Uh, not even a, not a fair assessment. I don't think that that's the right way to look at it when it comes to Lamar, because he's still such a young player. Yeah. Now, if we get in the year nine, 10 or whatever, then you might be able to say something like that. But John Elway didn't win his first Super Bowl to his 15th year in the NFL. So wow. what do you think? What do you think about, that criticism of Lamar when it comes to him being able to win big games? I think, I think his, his biggest criticism was just, I think as you know, uh, now a media personality, some people like to die on the hill that they're on. And yes. people have just never changed their tune and become a Lamar believer. So it's like, it's, I don't, and I don't blame him. It's like, no, I said seven years ago, this guy should play <laughs> right. wide receiver. So then he wins the MVP. You're like, well, he still didn't do it in the playoffs. Then we get the FC championship. <laughs> He's like, well, he still didn't win that game. So it's like he – he. it's crazy because as much as if, Lamar, if Mahomes isn't able to scramble and move around, he's just a straight pocket Correct. passer. He's a completely different guy. Completely 100%. different guy. And so I feel like – it's weird that people hold it against Lamar because he he runs. Like, right. like if there's an open lane and he can run, why, why would he not run? So it's <laughs> right. It's it's an odd concept. Um, but you know, what is it's it, it's I, I just feel like he does get uh, judged in a in a different path than others. I, I'm not sure really what it what it is exactly. Um, but it's I, I don't know. I mean, he, he's just never really. Some people have just not liked him. They're never going to like him. He probably won a Super Bowl, and they're still going to say, "I still think it wasn't should, him. It wasn't him. Yeah. It wasn't him. It was yeah, somebody else." You know, somebody I'm like, else. so. I mean, you just look at all the other quarterbacks that are you know elite that are younger than Lamar, yep. a little bit older. They don't really get held to the same standard at all. No. Um, they don't, you know, I, I've heard and, and I think he's 
a very elite quarterback. I've just heard how good Justin Herbert is. Like, right. he is good. He's legit. Right. But, I mean, there's plenty of quarterbacks that have not won a Super Bowl that are talked about that are way worse than Lamar. And it, it just doesn't make sense. So I, I don't have his oh. answers. I don't have his answers, but <laughs> right. it is what it is, I guess. No. The good, the good thing is I'm with that you. dude doesn't care at all. He like, does not. He does not care, like, <laughs> A tiny, in the smallest bit, he does not care. At, he don't even care about his MVP, he about to win. He's like, nope. bro, get the MVP. I want a Super Bowl. So that's really all he cares about. Yeah. And so that's, that's a good mindset. No, I think it's a great mindset. And, and I'll say this. Um, if they're comparing Lamar to Patrick Mahomes, that you can't compare any, anybody right now to what Mahomes is doing, right? Uh, he's got more playoff wins than... Burrow, Lamar, Tua, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, and Justin Herbert combined, right? And that's only in six years of starting. So you can't make that comparison, but that's not where I'm at. And I, and I agree with you. It's more of, well, comparing Lamar to other, other NFL Sam. superstars, yes. not named Mahomes, and other greats. He still has a ton of time, and I'm not saying he's got 10 more years to play. I'm just saying at six years in, you can't bury the guy and say he can't win it all. Uh, and and I just think that's it's just like you said, people dying on the hill that they wanted to be on. But when you talk about or should I say they were originally on? Yeah. When you talk about Lamar, I agree with you. He doesn't care about any of this stuff. He just all he wants to do is score touchdowns and win a Super Bowl. That's it. And give back to his community. That And I love that about him. Yeah. What was it like for you meeting Lamar for the first time? Uh, I can't think of when I first I remember Anthony Levine. <laughs> I kid you not. Anthony Levine was Probably the biggest Lamar believer from I, I'm talking about like from day, day one? one, bro. Okay. I I just now I'm not gonna say I was like doubting the guy, but I'm just like you know I'm looking at his his uh, his college. I'm like you know he's running around a lot, got a little bad. <laughs> uh, you know I'm like you know we got Joe, like we'll see how he transitions, blah blah blah. Yep. yep. Anthony Levine's like, bro, this is gonna be the the, the best quarterback like he's going to be bigger than lebron james he's going to be this baltimore he's gonna, i'm just like i'm like bro I, honestly i haven't really thought about it as deep as you're thinking about it right. but he was probably <laughs> the the biggest just believer of of his, of his his talent everything um right right so i can't really remember my first time meeting him but it's been you know just being there one year before him it was just a, a beautiful sight to see him become that pro that, you know, I, I think about you. How yes. You yes, were kind of, I know what you mean. You know, you were big, not big bro in him, but you were obviously, if no one could say you didn't do things right when, you were, when I was there with you at Baltimore. And that's his point blank period. Correct. And I think this year, man, I, to see him take on the leadership role, the verbal leadership role was, yes. was like a sight to see. It was just, uh, yeah. you know, when you think of, you know, how do you want your quarterback to act? It's, it's not really enough yep. to just do things and have people watch you do them. You, Yep. Kind of, you don't have to be, but it helps when you're that verbal guy, when you are the one, because everyone respects the quarterback. If, you, if, you're, if your yep. quarterback is not respected, your <laughs> team is not going to be good. That's just period. So what, what he was able to do this year, how he was able to turn, I even, I even told EDC, I think, in person, I was like, when did Lamar have a clause in his contract to become this verbal guy <laughs> when he signed that thing? Because, I, I mean, he, right. sure, he told me one game, he was like, bro, you got to play better. Like straight up, like you gotta play better. And I was like, I got you. Yeah. I, I I I do need to play better, and I plan on playing better. But he he just didn't really. And there's a big difference between being real with somebody and just fussing, just to fuss. And so I yes. think he was just able to to just lead us, and we were able to do big things. So, I mean, obviously, I'm super excited for you know yeah. for next year. Hopefully, we we try to get back there. But I know now we got just a really you know elite leader, not just an amazing MVP player. That just does things right. Go. Now we got a guy that's, if anything isn't going right, you don't got to look yeah. far. There's going to be somebody that's going to say something. And it's going to be him. Yeah. And it's, it's awesome to hear you say that because I heard it throughout the year that like Lamar had taken his leadership to a whole other level. And yeah. I agree with you. Like when Lamar came in as a rookie in 2018, I believe, uh, I think a lot of people thought that it was like, I was going to big bro him in that way. But I was, I mentored Lamar. But I wasn't a it wasn't a big bro type of situation. You know, Lamar. Yeah. Lamar don't got no big bros. <laughs> yeah. Lamar yeah. is a he, he's a very you know, he knows what he wants to do and he's going to go get that done. 
But I saw him grow and our relationship grow in my time there uh, to where I was able to be that mentor for him and help him out on the field um, with how to read certain things and just how you approach the game. But you're right, bro. I was in those leadership meetings uh, in 2018, 2019 and 2020 uh, because we had to have a, a, a vocal guy at the quarterback spot. But Lamar this year, being in the middle of the huddle and, and breaking the team down and, and pumping guys up and like you just said, holding you, holding you accountable. Like that's all everybody wanted. Yeah. Uh, and he grew into that. And I yeah. think he, he understood six years in, all right, you know, it's time. Yeah. I got the contract. I'm the guy. I got to go make it happen. And I've been so happy to, to obviously hear that from you, but also to see the success on the field and how it's changed him in that way. Yeah. It's been pretty awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, when you look at Zach Orr, right? This is a guy that is going to be the new defensive coordinator now that Mike McDonald has gone to the head coach of the Seahawks. Uh, I played against Zach. Um, I, I was on the team there for those three years with Zach on the staff. What are you most excited about with Zach or taking over the defense? I think, you know, when I got that text, I think it was in the, the DBs, we had a group message and they were like, Zach Orr is going to be the DC. I, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really believe it just because I'm like, right. I, I didn't know he was one of the, I didn't realize he had climbed the ladder that fast. Um, and so uh -huh. I was now he, but I was not disappointed at all. I mean, every time he, he comes in, <laughs> there's a, there's an order of operations how we start every week. And so Zach usually on what Tuesday, we have just two meetings, two meetings, uh, right. usually a uh, well, team meeting and then like two defensive like meetings type deal. And it's Zach starts the defensive meeting and it's impossible to match the intensity that from the, from the next guy. <laughs> so it's always like, I wish we would just, rotate them to where it was like a you know a build up and then you know the finale but i just right. know uh it'll be a very motivated bunch um i don't think we need much motivation but extra motivation never hurts and so i know he brings yeah. you know a lot of energy i know he's not a yes. guy to you know shy away from from saying anything you know i mean he ain't really scared of, of anybody so i'm super yeah. excited for that i think you know obviously it'll, it'll be hard to, to replace mike and uh, we were uh a top defense. I don't know really what all the stats were, but I think we got a good one in him. Uh, former player. Um, it, it's it's just funny. I was just telling him, uh, before, like I guess the Saturday before the game, I was like, "Man, you're 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 a couple years removed from you know you were a player. You're a couple years removed before you start saying crazy stuff like you didn't just play a couple <laughs> years ago. You know, God, some coaches that that ain't played in a long time they start saying crazy stuff." And so yep. uh, I was messing with him about that, and uh, he ends up being the DC. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I think we yep. got a couple other gaps to fill, but uh, I know we got yep. a DC that uh, you know he, he's going to be there for us. Yeah, and and he's going to be violent, and he said it, it's going to be violent execution. You know, I always say about Zach, he's intense, but he's calm, intense, right? Yeah. He he knows how to be intense. He's the kind of guy that you know you walk past in the in the hallway, and he might just bump into you on purpose. <laughs> Just because he likes contact. You know what I'm contact. saying? Like, that's that's how Zach, Zach yeah. is. And I'm not saying he's walking through the halls bumping into people, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm excited for him, uh, excited for you guys. Uh, I always am an advocate for former players to be able to rise the ranks quickly. quickly. You, yeah. We know what it's like to go through what we're going through. And Zach's, in my opinion, a, a great teacher and a great leader of men. So that's going to be awesome. But you've had some coaching takes lately, Marlo. <laughs> Uh, and it's, you know, I'm going, I'm talking about, you're, t you're talking about Bill Belichick and essentially saying that he's not the greatest coach of all time. Now, I think I know who you might be referring to as who that coach is, but why do you think Belichick is not the greatest coach of all time? I was, okay, so. <laughs> Go ahead, explain. I'm, I'm all always. Right, so I'm I right. was, all right. So I just look at it like this. I've had different coaches, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. I've never been a a fan of any take that says coaches make players. Ooh, because at okay. the end of the day, Bill Belichick ain't never thrown a touchdown, handed off nothing. It's players, you can't name me any, there's very few coaches, very few coaches that have taken multiple quarterbacks and done very great things. There's not many. There That's is true. some. There is some. But you look yep. at you know, this argument of, you know, was it Brady? Was it Belichick? Was it Brady? Was it Belichick? And it's like, okay, Brady leaves. Patriots are, I don't know what they did, but they, they didn't do a lot. 
And then you look at Brady, he <laughs> right, leaves, right. and then he's like, oh, let me just let me just win another one right quick. Just just real quick. Like not, <laughs> I'm going to win another one right, right quick. And I'm just like, I never gave my take on that whole thing. And I'm just sitting here like, are you people nuts? Like, what are you guys, t- what are you guys talking about here? I just think it's odd that the greatest coach of all time gets you know, fired and nobody wants to just. Mm, nobody. Got, you, you said there's six head coaching six. spots available and nobody brought him in. I know what you're the saying. Line, I get I'm exactly not what you're Bill, even though I basically kind of did accidentally, but I didn't mean to. But now that I already <laughs> did, now that I already did, I might as well just double down, you know. Um, but don't be one of those guys that you don't that you don't want to be. Yeah. But you've always felt this way. I know. Yeah. I've known you've always felt this yeah. way. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I you know, I try to usually leave my you know, honestly, I don't really be realizing the the damage I be doing on the on the social media sometimes. But oh, you be doing damage. You know, I now, usually Marlo. you know damage. I, it doesn't always go through. I just think something that just goes through. But you know. <laughs> I, I usually try not to be too critical of coaches and or players until I'm done right. with ball. And then it'll be my job to do that. But that was a that was really an accident. I didn't really mean to come in hot like that. Came in hot. Right. Six head coach openings. No job. People say, well, he's 71. And I'm like, that's he still got he got time. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. You know, Mr. Incredible. Right. But it just was. I mean, they say the numbers don't lie. There were six head coaches. The numbers do not lie. Yes. I, okay. I, I'll say this: when it comes to Bill Belichick, I, the six head coaching openings being there and him not getting one of them, I think had more so to do with the maybe the type of control he wants to have, That's or it. the Patriot way That's that it. people think is no longer a viable method of winning games in the NFL. I don't disagree. I think the Patriot way is dead. So I can understand why he didn't maybe get one of those opportunities. But your point about every coach has a quarterback, right? Mike Shanahan had John Elway. Um, Obviously, Andy Reid has Patrick Mahomes. Belichick has Brady, Terry Bradshaw, and then the Steelers coaches. Like, listen, I get it. Uh, Walsh had, uh, what is it? Joe Montana. Uh, But, to your point, Nick Saban in the college ranks did it with multiple quarterbacks, multiple different ways, and was a part of basically college football lore for generations, it feels like. Yeah. So you're kind of speaking to the fact that Nick Saban might actually be the greatest coach of all time, regardless of college or pro. Yeah, I mean, I think you look at it's like, you know, I think for a little bit era there, Dabo Sweeney was trying to come into that conversation. That is true. That is true. If Dabo Sweeney doesn't have an all-world quarterback, he can't do a thing. <laughs> oh I mean, I'm just going to be on. He had Deshaun Watson, freaking <laughs> elite. Trevor Lawrence, elite. No offense to, to DJ Ukulele and the other guys that he was having. He said DJ Ukulele. No offense. Ui Ungulele. Ungulele, whatever. He was having them cats. And all them boys, it was, it was looking bad. It was looking real bad. They, they were. So, they were. You know, I'm... I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying it's it is very that was more so <laughs> hey also I can't believe freaking Nick Saban retired. But anyway. Oh my gosh. No, I can't believe it either. That surprised me. Um no, I, but I, I just now nah, back to Belichick with the control thing. I did feel like he they kind of took his power away while he was still there for the past couple years, actually. Ooh, because when I started okay. seeing, and I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not talking bad about any players. But when I started seeing right, them right, sign right. certain guys that weren't extremely high character guys, I started being like, right. that doesn't seem like a Patriot player. They, and they just started signing them like just multiple of them. Everyone knew what a Patriot player was. You I know, know what just, you're saying. Just, uh, you know. You know, then they sign, you know, no offense to Juju. Juju, he's over doing, you know, he's the social media, TikTok, Snapchat, nothing wrong with that. But you know, <laughs> that wasn't really, 10 years ago, if they would have signed Juju, that would have been like right. a head scratcher. You that would have been, yeah, a little um, weird. I got you, yeah. Even my boy Judon. I was like, Judon go to the Patriots, you don't really seem like a, you know, but I think they kind of started taking that power away from him while he was there, which, you know, if the Patriot way was his thing, and I saw some reports about that this might have happened. I, I could see why he could, you know, there could have been feuding there because he kind of took away okay. the culture that he had felt like he created 
there. Okay. I could see that. I could see that. Um, I don't, do, I, I, I've actually never thought about that. You would think that with his, you know, tenure there and all the Super Bowls that he won, that they wouldn't take that away, but I can kind of see where you're going. If you, uh, maybe there was a, maybe there was an attempt by him to adapt to the oh, times yeah, that and he just didn't adapt quick enough. Yeah. Um, but you did mention something about Saban that I want you to quickly comment on. Why were you surprised that Nick Saban retired? Man, honestly, I just thought, I just thought Saban just really, the dude is just so football. Um, I just didn't think he would. I thought he'd be one of those. I'm about to drop dead. I'm, you know, drop like legit. I am about to stop coaching because I'm about to, you know, leave this earth type deal. Like I really just thought kind of that would be his way going out. Um, but you know, it, it just really it surprised me. Um, I, I just didn't think it, it, w- it would even happen. But I guess you know he he tricked us all. He's just so locked in. He. He's like, you know, I'm actually over this. I just was locked in for a little bit of time. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's going to Alabama football. It won't be as. I won't have my chest as poked out on Sundays anymore. You know, I walk in like, I got you. You know, I know my team didn't lose, you know, so it, it, it might. <laughs> I, I might have to, you know, it might be some nail biting. I stopped even watching some of the games when it's like Mississippi State. Come on. We're good. They like, don't even worry about that. <laughs> so it, uh, it might be a change. But hopefully Du Bois comes in and he's. Uh, it's going to be hard to pick up the slack. And I will say it, that, I, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Yeah. It's a difficult dis- uh, situation to come into for Kalen DeBoer. I got you on the, on the names. Oh, I know golly. some of these I'm, can be I'm, a little, oh, it's, I'm, you, you, you murdered I'm some names. I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm, I'm over here. Goodness. But it's okay. Wow, wow. I agree. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one to come in behind the goat, the legend like that. But um, I'm hoping for you and all Alabama uh, alum and, and, and Roll Tide Nation that you guys are, are, are good to go moving forward with, with DeBoer. All right, Marlo, let's get into this Super Bowl preview. You faced both of these teams, uh, the 49ers and the Chiefs. Um, one interesting fact about the Chiefs is that last year's Super Bowl, they played against the Eagles. The Eagles led the league in sacks, had 70. They didn't sack Mahomes one time in the Super Bowl. And the fact that from you guys' game in the AFC Championship is the Ravens led the league in takeaways with 31, and they didn't, you guys didn't get any off of Mahomes in the AFC Championship game. When you look at this, like, what is the blueprint to stopping Mahomes and or stopping Travis Kelsey for the 49ers? Man, it's really it's easier <laughs> said than done. Easier said right. than done. But I think you got to cage rush him. I think okay. he is so good at, like, he's really good at just staying within the, you know, getting out to the B-gap. Um, he's yep. really good at that. So I think – you know, getting to a high field shoulder is just, just bad ball. And I think you got to, I mean, you got to put the DBs in the back. You got to plaster. Yep. Four, tell them, tell them like, what plaster, tell them what plaster means. Plaster what does plaster is, mean? Uh, you know, this is, um, basically after he scrambles, you know, you got to, after yes. the quarterback scrambles, you go latch that guy and you just stay on. You just don't, yep. whether you're in cover three, whether you're in man, whatever you're in, forget all that. Just go to that guy and just follow that. You're playing tag. Plaster yep. is basically tag. You're playing tag, <laughs> all that guy everywhere. And uh, with Mahomes, you can you can legit be playing tag, plastering for like ten plus seconds. Yep. I only know that because I did it on one of the drives. And um, so it's easier said than done to to, to kind of you know uh, keep him in a you know a cage where he can't really release uh, Mahomes. Right. But then it's like with Kelsey, man. Crazy thing about Mahomes is everybody is he's able to get everyone the ball no matter what is going on. You talked earlier about that rollout. I think Correct. the crazy thing about that rollout was usually when you roll out, it's either okay, it's not there. Let me just run. Like let me try to. It's really a throwaway. This dude yeah. throws the ball backside to a. <laughs> why is Kelsey even running a slant? Anyway, why is he running a slant? Right. I, I'm like, like that doesn't even like. So those two were like, just the. I don't even know how to stop those two together. I'm just right. to be honest with you. There, I don't really think there is a is a plan to stop those guys, but uh, right. to stop that 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 connection. So you just got to try to limit that as much as you can, and yeah. uh, just just kind of try to survive. So so I'll I'll say this. You know, I wanted to ask you that question because you faced him, and and Kelsey had 100 yards receiving. Right, he he had a great game for them, but they only scored 17 points. So at some point in the game, you guys figured it out. But early in the game, they were putting Kelsey in situations where you guys had to show your hand. You know, they go with the west-right slot formation on the touchdown pass. 
right? Kyle Hamilton's in great coverage, but I've always told people this, and you know this saying, there's no coverage for the perfect throw. And Mahomes made the perfect throw on that play. So what was it in the second half that allowed you guys to, you know, Kelsey still had a couple catches, but you slowed that offense down completely. What what was it in the second half that made the difference for you guys? Man, I think it was it was just getting off the field. Like some of those third okay. downs. I mean, it was it was hard, uh, a little bit, you know, tighter coverage, uh, throwing some more man. Um, and I think our rush really helped too. I know we didn't get back okay. to sack them. It, it was, I don't know if we had any sacks. Maybe we had we had a couple. We had a couple. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, two sacks. Yep. Some some man to man. Um, and then honestly, I mean, you know, they kind of helped us out too with a couple <laughs> penalties they had off his whole thing. Right, right. I mean, that, like I, I mean, obviously, only scores had the team, but a couple of those were, you know. And then we had helped them out a couple with some conversions too, with some you know roughing the passers. But um, yep. I think um they, you know, they don't have a they don't have that Tyreek Hill that they want you to have. Right. Um, not that they really need that, but everyone else, you, you can man to man them up a little better than what people think. It's just okay. the man and up Kelsey is, you know, arguably the greatest tight end of all time. That's where you fall in trouble with man to man. And there ain't no Correct. there ain't no secret sauce to, to that guy. He's uh yeah. at, least, at least for good reason. No doubt. So now before I ask you who you, who you think is gonna win the game, talk to me about the 49ers on the other side. Um, with Brock Purdy uh, against you guys late in the year. He threw four interceptions, got sacked twice, had a quarterback rating of 42.6. What What do you think the blueprint to stopping that Brock Purdy in that offense is? And what did you guys have figured out in that game? I think the biggest way to stop them is, is, is as simple as it sounds, is, is just tackle. It's, right. If you don't tackle them, they will beat you so bad it will get ugly. You know, it, it is like, you know, obviously my hit with Debo, that dude is a yeah. brick house. McCaffrey, brick house. Brick, like, it's like all their guys are like, they're not, you hit them, you kind of fall off. Yeah, you just get, oh, okay, yeah. what what was, was that a human? Was that a wall? <laughs> what was that? I mean, can, they, you look at them, they're like, actually, their team, their offense is very rarely do you have an elite, elite player in every single offensive position group. I mean, literally in every single position group. Trent Williams, Debo, Ayuk, McCaffrey, Kittle. It's like it just goes on and on. But all those guys are so strong up top, really got to bring your feet. And so if you can tackle them, which is easier said than done, you can get a lot of places. Uh, but if you don't, man, it can it can be a long day. And, you know, I think everyone looked at um, – I'm over here. Brock Purdy, you know, sport interceptions. I was looking at it because obviously I was thinking, you know, we might get there. They'll probably get to the Super Bowl. He had what two tips? Yes. No, yes, he did. Three tips. There's three tips in one. He really only threw one interception. Yes. So yes. At, obviously, that was uncharacteristic of him, but he really wasn't out there just throwing picks and picks and picks. So <laughs> right. it looked good for us, but you know, when I look at the tape, I'm like, you know, this game could have been a lot different. But yes, it, uh, it worked in our favor, and I didn't complain. But I was just thinking for the next time we saw him. Don't sit here thinking, you know, he gets a lot of hate, too. Yes, he does. I, mean, uh, I think uh, his biggest hater is, uh, is, is Cam Newton, it seems like, but not a hater. <laughs> as, he says, <laughs> as he said, he's not a hater, and I'm not going to disagree with that he's not hating, because right. he said he's like the 11th best player. And it's like, well, that team is full of all pros, <laughs> but I still think he's... Probably not eleven, but whatever. That's a whole different. Yeah, he's that. he's not a ten or eleven. He's, he's not. He's not. Yeah, he's, he's not. But he's whatever. Not. The whole other story for another day. But yep. I think uh, as simple as that sounds, tackling is is probably the biggest thing. But I feel like on offense, you really got to take it to their defense. Their defense okay. is elite, but you yep. can't let them, you know, punk you. But they definitely have the ability to punk you. That's the other thing. So, <laughs> That's true. Um, and I think the best way to stop Kelsey, I think people should take more. Look at that Buccaneers game plan. Okay. When you put a linebacker on, if you got a linebacker that can really do all that, a lot of people don't. I think it was right. Monta David, maybe that was guarding him a lot, but I believe so. He brings so much pump to you when you try to jam him. A safety usually can't hold up. Right. A corner, it's hard for a corner to hold up unless you're yep. super strong, more Jalen Ramsey type. Okay. Like you just got to be, you got to bring it to him. And that's a, that's a hard thing to do, but most safeties don't have the, 
I feel like the best would be uh, Derwin James. Guys like that. Okay. You can have a safety okay. kind of like that, but it's better to have a backer kind of on the front end. Uh, just, to, just to rough him around a lot. Yeah, just kind of like throw off his uh, equilibrium a little bit, his timing with Mahomes. Yeah. Get that guy off that, you know, right off the line of scrimmage that's not going to let him just get a free release. Yeah. Uh, but they have been pretty, you know, unique about how they move him around now to yeah. kind of avoid some of that over. stuff. Yeah. But um, no, I, I don't disagree in the in the game for you guys against the Niners. Uh, it was the turnover bug, whether yeah. it was the tip passes or the one interception that he threw that was, like you said, a legit interception that put them behind the eight ball. But they were at, I believe they were at full strength when they played you guys. So it wasn't like one guy wasn't out there. One of the Avengers, as I call them, on their offense. Uh but when you talk about Cam Newton, like I'm, I got a lot of respect for Cam. I respect what he did as a player. Uh, he did have that statement and he's saying he's not backing down from it and more power to him for that. But do you believe Brock Purdy is a game manager and only a game manager? I'm not sure who came up, with it, but I, I feel like him and Shanahan are like the perfect duo for one. One hundred percent. I think 100%. there's some like it, there's some quarterbacks that can listen. There's some quarterbacks out here doing their own thing. Like they're <laughs> the coach is obviously right. coaching them, but you know, they're still I feel like Shanahan and him can almost be the same person and exactly where the he knows exactly where the ball needs to go. Correct. Whatever he's told, it's like it's boom, it needs to be there. It needs to be there. But we're boom. He's not and he doesn't really drift away from the plan. He's a guy that's like studied he, it's like someone gave him the test. <laughs> it's <Yep>. like <laughs> memorize all these and then go out here like even if this question is different, I don't believe it. Just do this. Right. And so right. I feel like they're a really good coach uh, player duo. And Purdy's able to execute the, the plan that they go over, which is like coaching to a T and players, like, you know, trusting your coach and everything. So I've never thought he was a game um, manager thing. I mean, if you're a game manager, I mean, shouldn't everybody want to be a game manager and go to the Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> Let him be a game manager. That's exactly. So. I don't know where that really came from, but I think he's a he's, he's a he's a really good quarterback. No, I, I agree with you, and and I and I felt this way. Y- your your point about why people say what they say about Lamar Jackson, kind of sticking to their points, is kind of the same way that I feel about about Brock Purdy. He was Mister Irrelevant last pick in the draft, but I feel like the real Mister Irrelevants are the ones that are throwing shade at him for no reason. Like, don't be jealous of him because he's in a situation that we all dream of being in as a quarterback with with unlimited support. It feels like from the organization and from the guys around you. Don't throw shade at him because he's making every throw or because he's making those game-changing plays with his feet. So I, I don't believe he's a game manager. Um, I, I don't think a win or a loss in this game determines whether he's a game manager or not. Um, but when you look at the game, all right, fourth Super Bowl for Mahomes in his first six years, uh, in the last six years, should I say, um, Super Bowl rematch from Super Bowl 54 against the Niners, who do you think wins this game? I am um, – I'm not really – I wouldn't say I'm an emotional guy. I usually can okay. just, you know, you know, be pretty <laughs> honest. You know, be – for what you know, I gave my assessments, what I think teams do, this, that, and the right. third. But ever since we lost to the Chiefs, I have been on a big time – I don't want anybody to win. Like, <laughs> like I, I just watched the Pro Bowl a couple days ago. I watched some of the Pro Bowl, and I just remember being like, I don't want I don't want the FC to win. I, I know Kyle, I was like, I literally told Kyle, I said, I hope you lose today. I, I said I wanted you to lose today <laughs> just because I wanted you to still feel hurt. <laughs> I yeah, wanted right. you to still feel hurt. So I when I saw the 49ers Lions, I was like, I was happy the 49ers won because okay. I didn't feel that the Lions could beat the Chiefs. I felt that the 49ers just have their Discipline their defense, blah, blah, blah. They, they were a better match for the Chiefs. Yeah. So my complete biases and slight hate in my heart for nobody <laughs> can only tell me that the 49ers need to win the Super Bowl and everybody on the AFC. I don't want a single winner of the AFC. So my biasness and slight hate in my heart for anyone winning, go 49ers. Okay, I, I, I can understand it. I, I really do. Uh, some people are saying that, that, you know, this is the Super Bowl matchup that nobody wanted. They wanted to see Eminem versus Taylor Swift, right? Yeah. With the Lions versus the Chiefs. Yeah, really I personally wanted to see the Ravens in that thing. So although I'm talking to you today, I was hoping that I wouldn't have, have the chance to because you'd be playing in the Super Bowl. 
Uh, but I'm still rocking with you guys no matter what. Uh, I do believe the Chiefs win this game, uh, and I think they win it uh, not just because of the quarterback play, but because of the way that they're constructed now. They're a defensive football team. They are, uh, and, 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 and Mahomes has managed it. They're the number two defense in the NFL in points per game, number two in sacks. I believe they're number two in takeaways. So it's, um, it's just one of those situations where I think the old school way of winning the game with the, having the greatest quarterback in the galaxy is probably what's going to allow them to, to repeat as champs. And from that standpoint, do you think if the Chiefs win against your wishes, against everything that you want, do you think that they become the latest NFL dynasty? Yeah, I do. You know, um, pains me to say that, but I mean, you look at just, man, it's, it, they, they for sure do. I mean, I, I just, I referenced uh, during media week we were playing, I was like, they're like the NFL version of, you know, Alabama. Um, okay. It doesn't matter, or or the NFL version of the Patriots, you know, a couple of years, like a couple of years ago when right. Brady was there. And right. It's like, it doesn't matter how they're doing that year, they have a chance every year. That's true. There's not, there's plenty of teams, NFL teams, <laughs> that you can be, oh, this is the team, and the very next year you're one of the worst teams in the league. They yeah. always have a chance. And so the best thing that they can do now is when you, it goes back to how they played the Ravens, how they played us, the Ravens. Yeah. Mahomes wasn't trying to do anything crazy because he knew he had a defense that could back him even if things didn't go. And so Correct. that defense, I think a lot of people, kind of don't talk about their defense as much as they should. That's a that's, that's a really elite defense. You got really good corners. They got really good players, like just all yeah. over the field. In the past, they kind of were like, okay, Mahomes, you kind of got to do it all. Now right. it's like Mahomes can be a little bit more in the strategic seat as opposed to the just do it all, do it all, do it all. Yeah. And so yeah. I think, you know, the success they've had just over six years since Mahomes been there. You you can't not put them in the dynasty seat, and uh, you know it's it's they're the team to beat, man. It's uh, yeah. you know even even maybe I was biased because uh, they're in my division, but even when the Bengals just went there, even as constructed yeah. as a team was, you didn't look at them and think, oh, they're going to just go on and just go every single year. But when you look at the <laughs> Chiefs, right. the way they're constructed now and how they've yeah. consistently done it year in and year out, yep. they're definitely up there and turn into that dynasty. Yeah, they got the core four. And I know you look forward to knocking off that dynasty next year or whenever it may be if they end up winning the game. Um, but they've got that core four. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Chris Jones. As long as they have those core four, I think they can continue to get this thing rolling. It's just a matter of how long can they get it. Brady won three in five years, and he had a nine-year drought uh, between his next Super Bowl. So it just depends on how it all works out. But you know the game of football. and uh, you think the Niners are going to win because that's what your spirit and everything wants you to think. So if the Niners do win, who do you think wins Super Bowl MVP? Man, I feel like I think they're going to I think they're going to dedicate to the run game. I for okay. some reason think they're going to dedicate to the run game. And I think it's going to be Christian McCafferty. Oh, OK, um, OK. But I, that's only because I think they'll dedicate to the run game. But if they let, you know, I, I, I think Brock Purdy, I was going to buy Brock Purdy trading card i was in trading cards oh. i was going to buy his number one of one card okay I'm a, I'm a fan of i think brock Purdy's a really good quarterback um, uh, degree. i degree this card ended up going for like 100k and uh oh, wow. spin that so anyway mm. but um <laughs> i think if they <laughs> the put a no. more normal game plan it'll be Purdy, and if they just kind of let him just do his thing but i think being that i think the chiefs run defense isn't the best and i think if they really dedicate to it um i think i think it'll be christian McCaffrey. Okay, I can, I can see that. It's going to be both sides, right? The Chiefs are weaker in the running game than they are in the past, but they're still a really good team. And then the 49ers, at the same time, have not been as good against the run. And Isaiah Pacheco has been much better, uh, really been a, a force for them these past few weeks, especially in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's going to be a great game. But before we go, I got a couple quick hitting questions for you. For you, um, who are the top five cornerbacks in the NFL? And go ahead and put yourself in that number, whatever. You're in the list. Who are the other four? I uh, I got to go with uh, Sauce, two all pros back to back. Young guy, PS2. Okay, Sertan, gotcha. Jalen Ramsey. I think those are three, the top three for sure, whichever way you, yeah. you, you spin it. I don't, right. I'll, do, I'll do five. And then I'll, I'll put a, uh, if you're going off what's happened this past year, 
Okay. And then so you can determine. Somebody I really liked was the was it was it Jalen Johnson? Is his name with the with the Bears? Yes. I really liked what he put on film this year. Um, okay. I really like that's I don't know if a lot of people have that. I really like what he put on film this year. Showing love. I like it. Um I'm doing four. Can't think of five. Can't think that's of five. fine. You're the fifth. You're the fifth guy. So like, that's the like. that's that's Mullen's top five. I appreciate that. Now give me your toughest cover. In in all your years of playing, who's been the toughest cover for you at the wide receiver spot? Tyreek. Okay. That's very easy. Oh yeah. Um should come to mind a little easier. <laughs> um we can stay there with Tyreek. Tell me why. I I think I know why Tyreek is a is a tough cover from the quarterback's perspective and seeing it. Why is he such a tough cover from a DB, DB perspective? He's able to – he's one of the few guys, obviously, speed kills. I think as many track yep. guys that have come into the NFL, not many of them could put that speed while they're playing football. Okay. So I, I never quite understood what – how exactly. That, <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's like, cause I know this guy runs. 10 one. I know this guy runs 10 yep. two, whatever. But he's yep. fast, but he's not. He just doesn't have Tyreek can actually just run right at you and just go right around you and stack yep. you right back and be able to get vertical. So his mm-hmm. speed just kills and he's kind of short to the ground. And when he just did, he does it in such a just fast motion, you kind of panic. It's hard to That's not true. Just panic. And you can panic even if you play perfect technique. If you're not, if you miss the jam, you're done. Oh, if it's you, over. You jam, you take too many steps, and he just keeps going. It's, it's a lot that he, can, that he can get you with. Um, and so it makes it tough. I, I honestly yeah. just – I don't know if I just shut off football mode, but I cannot think of wide receivers right now. Um, it's okay. Listen, I, I, you're, you're, you're that good, Marlon. Like, it is what it is. But uh, – with Tyreek, I also think it's because he, he has instant speed. It's like instant oatmeal. Instant as soon as he takes off, he's gone. He's gone. Right? He's so gone. from that standpoint, he's also strong. Like he's a he's a, a, a stockier, you know, shorter guy. So once he does get rolling, and even if you do try to jam him, I know, uh, what was it, Sneed that jammed him into the – he said he jammed him all the way to Cancun <laughs> because he got his hands on him and was able to control him. But uh, if, you don't, if you don't get your hands on him, it's, it's a done deal. So done I deal. can totally agree uh, with that. So – Man, I want to say uh, thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate the candidness and and the open conversations. Um, Like I've told you multiple times, uh, not only do I think you're a baller, you're a phenomenal uh, brother uh, with everything that you do for your family. Um, You've been uh, amazing to me uh, when I was there in Baltimore and since I've left. So I just want to say thank you for that, man. And and all the kids out there, if if you want to be a great athlete, it's not all about genetics. Marlon's got great genetics. Don't get me wrong. But it's also about playing as many sports as you possibly can. And, and you were one of the, the top dual sport athletes uh, coming out of high school. And I remember that vividly. Enjoy Vegas. Uh, enjoy going back home and, and continue to, to operate like the Super Bowl is not happening. You know, <laughs> only only 100 plus million people are going to watch it, but it's not happening. I got you. Not happening. All right, guys, that's a wrap for episode 21 of RG3 and the Ones. Want to give a huge shout out to my main man, Marlon Humphrey, or as I call him, All Pro Marlo. He did an amazing job coming in here, having a great conversation with us. And I hope that you could take at least one thing from what he said, apply it to your own life so you can become the one in that bad boy as well. In order for us to become the one, we need you guys. You got to listen and subscribe to our YouTube channel and know that you can follow us on social media at RG3 and the Ones. And that's not it. You can also listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. We need you guys so we can continue to go out and have a good time covering the game and its athletes and coaches the right way. But as I said before, RG3 and the Ones is a way sports and entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. And I got to give a huge shout out to the team that makes this all possible. Our, pro- our producer, Joanna, does an amazing job, not just with the rundowns, but also having to deal with me every single day. And our team over at Whispering Oaks Productions also does an amazing job providing you guys with all of this great content. So, again, follow us on social media at RG3 and the Ones. Like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And before we bounce out, you always know I want to give you guys a little bit of motivation. So there's this picture that's floating around online. And it's a guy hammering away at the wall and he's walking away at the last second right before his breakthrough is about to happen. I want you guys to know that sometimes it feels like you're working and you're you're sinking in the quicksand. But understand that every single day that you get up and you apply yourself to your dreams and your goals, you are getting that much closer to what you want to accomplish. Don't give up. Your breakthrough is right around the corner. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace.